All right. I have totally had it with fair. Hi everybody, I'm Justice Graves. This is my channel and welcome. If you want to support me, please subscribe or you can join me at justicegraves.locals.com. That's justicegraves.locals.com for some exclusive content with regards to the background on what this video is about. But let's just get started. So this video is about the Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism Incorporated, also known as FAIR. And oh boy, there are there some conversations that need to be had about them. So for those of you who don't know, a few days ago, there was that whole situation with the National, so the National School Boards Association writing to the Attorney General, basically calling out that, you know, basically over-inflating the amount of violent incidences that were happening at school board meetings because I was on a school committee and I, I understand that my region is a little bit different, but by and large, there's very few places where things are going horribly wrong. For the places that are going wrong, it's, it's a community issue. Those people need to talk, they need to have a real conversation and sit down with people. Sometimes it's literally the committees and the boards that are antagonizing people, sometimes it's the other way around. Not going to excuse it, but that's a community issue. It is not a national phenomenon. You know, what Ludon County Board of Schools is doing is it's purposely antagonizing its parents to get them more vicious. Okay, that is very obvious. But, apparently, we gotta play, and apparently when small things happen, we gotta overplay everything. So... As we know that happened, you can clearly sense my thoughts on that. And then Merrick Garland basically said, okay, go after them all. Just go after all the parents. And while that memorandum, you know, to some people might be like, oh, it doesn't really read right that. You gotta actually learn how to read what these types of things are because it's very formal and it's very... He's basically saying, sick on them. Just, I, I sick the federal government on you. And it's not good. In fact, it's, an, it's been exposed in the last few days that a lot of the criticisms that have started to grow about social-emotional learning, which Deb Philman, if, you have not, if you're not following her on The Reason We Learn, the YouTube channel, and the Locals community at thereasonwelearn.locals.com, you should be following her. But that's besides the point. What's been going on is that Mayor Garland does, although I don't know if it rises up to a legal conflict of interest, there is a, there's a special interest within his family with when it comes to the selling of social emotional learning services that has come out um i can't remember her name she's part of parents defending against education she actually just followed me on twitter like a few minutes ago um her name is azra i believe i'm probably getting it wrong i apologize but she's been doing a really good job with erica sanzi basically because our azra actually used to be an investigative journalist, so she's actually doing some work and actually has been exposing what's been going on in the Attorney General's office with regards to this particular issue. All of this leads up to the fact that FAIR put out this really ridiculous letter that, you know, me, Deb, and Carlin had a reaction video that went up. It's going to be in the description. I'm saying all of this to get you up to speed, but what we're going to talk about in this video is why I've absolutely had it with FAIR and what happened. So a few days ago when we did that reaction video to FAIR's feckless letter in relation to the Attorney General situation, which, is, which I just described, in response to the NS National School Boards Association, the NSBA's letter saying parents are being dangerous at school committee meetings, now it all comes circling back around to what FAIR has been doing where they basically spent most of their letter highlighting themselves, being, no offense, we know who fair, at least a lot of people who know, are on the up and up on what's going on in the United States know what fair is. And, you know, which is a, it's a not-for-profit organization that is supposed to help with legal challenges and things that are going on with regards to critical race theory and SEL and all the bad ideas that are floating around. And they made a letter, they talked about themselves for like the first paragraph and a half, I'm going to qualify that more to a paragraph and a half, and went into flattering themselves basically, not paying attention to the situation, which is what they're responding to what Mayor Garland is doing. And then finally said, there's a lot of people doing dangerous stuff at school committee me meetings, we condemn them, but please don't go after us who are actually doing stuff. It was the most useless letter in the universe. They basically just did it to do it, in my opinion. 
Well, that letter, what you know, there were valid criticisms that we gave in that stream, not stream, but in that live recorded video with me and Deb and Dr. B, where we talked about how FAIR didn't put, you know, they put the name of their organization on it, but they didn't put basically who authorized this, who authorized this letter, you know, how do these decisions get made from FAIR? And we had a conversation and we said, who is on the board of directors? Well, somebody was researching and ended up figuring out, hey, and messaged Deb and Carlin and said, hey, listen, there's a way to do this to find out who was on the initial board of directors for FAIR, but you got to put your name on it and you got to put a request into the New York State Division of Corporations. And the person said, I'm not willing to do it, but it's usually at a minimum of $5 that you can do for it. I was going to put in that request. I was actually going to do it for the certified copy, which is going to cost more money. And then I was going to do it for expedited because I'm like, I want to know within this week what's going on. Didn't get to put that in request in because somebody else, I don't know if they had done it like months ago. I don't know if they just basically spent like a hundred bucks and did like a super expedited, like two hour request, which is what you can do. They got an answer and they anonymously sent it to both Deb and Carlin. And then I got a copy because I'm like, I want to see the actual copy of this thing. So I saw it and I read it. I blacked out, not blacked up, but basically whited out the parts that are not, you know, the the address that they're using for the board of directors. I, I blacked that out because we I didn't think that was appropriate, but the rest of the document's untouched. I do have the original document in my computer. Not going to release that. But we are going to look at every single page. This is kind of like a take two moment because I didn't like how the rest of that other video went so, or the other filming that I did went. So first I want to confirm, her name is Azra. I just checked on that because I know I've been messing that up. But she's been doing good work with Defending Ed with Erica Sanzi, and I think you should give both of them a follow, and you should see what's been going on. Now, we're going to go straight into the document. And I'm going to try and explain this as succinctly as possible, what's going on and my feelings and what my issues are with FAIR because they've been an organization that I've been interested in with possibly talking to them. I did talk to a regional representative at one point back, I think about four or five months ago. It was right when I was about to be elected to school committee. Didn't follow up on it because the more and more I tried to look into what was going on, the more I felt more suspicious because of my experiences being on a, I currently sit on a board of directors for a local nonprofit. So I'm just going to pull up FAIR's certificate of incorporation that that anonymous person gave to us. So let me try and blow that up. It's in a format that I really should have not done it like this, but we're going to do it like this. So this is their certificate of incorporation. This is very standard language that has been filed with the New York State Division of Corporations. This document is available under Section 402. Well, I don't know, not available under Section 402, but the contents of which are required under Section 402 of the Not-for-Profit Corporation Law, which is, of course, under Article 5 of the New York State Codes. So its formal name is the Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism. They do not have any other names than that or nicknames as far as we're aware, except for what they colloquially call themselves. It has all the powers of a corporation as defined in subparagraph A5 of section 102 of article 2 of the not-for-profit not corporation law, or no, article 5 of section 102 of the not-for-profit corporation law. I have been looking into their enumerated powers and these are pretty standard, and this is all standard language. What I want to go into, and there's something that I'm not saying in all of this, that normally when we talk about nonprofits, we immediately mention this. You know, this office of the corporation shall be located in the county of New York, which consists of where Manhattan area, where the Manhattan area is. In case you don't know that there is a county in New York called New York County, I know. It's there's New York City, there's New York County, which is in that city in the borough of Manhattan, and then you have um, then you have New York State, which is the name of the state. So I'm trying to make this bigger. Here we go. And the seventh requirement that they have to put in is their initial board of directors. Now this doesn't necessarily have to say until the first annual meeting. 
It could have just said these are the initial directors of the corporation, are as follows. Doesn't have to qualify it with anything. This is I don't know why they put that in there. What that tells me as somebody that has to deal with bylaws a lot and that's somebody that sits on a board is that they have a system to determine who those people are, which means there's some other voting body that gets to make those decisions or some other type of activating mechanism, some type of fundraising, you know, evaluation system, something that tells them who gets to be on the board. And what I find interesting is who the three people who are on the board are. It's Bayon Bartning, who is their CEO, Melissa Chen, and Barry Weiss. Now, outside of this, this is not really too interesting, except for the fact that nobody knew that these three people were technically on the board. And all this white space here is where the um, is where the addresses would have been listed. It didn't pick up on that. So a CEO being on a board of directors is not surprising. It's typical. Sometimes they're not CEOs, they're called presidents, whatever. It really, you know, it doesn't need to be hyped up. What's surprising, of course, is that Melissa Chen and Barry Weiss are also on the advisory board. Now, an advisory board in an organization typically doesn't have any enumerated powers. Um, sometimes it can, but it depends on your bylaws or internal corporate rules, which are not subject necessarily to state requests. One of the things that's interesting is that according to the New York State Codes, they could have put some founding documents in this request. They could have put some extra materials, but most don't. So we don't know how their board is constructed. We know that its membership at this point is three members big. We know it's Bayon, Melissa, and Barry. And as far as we know, since Bayon hasn't changed as CEO, he is still on this board, and it probably didn't change. It's probably Bayon, Melissa, and Barry, because this was filed all the way back in January, in December into January. January is when that final stamp, well, the, when it got put into the filing system for the New York Division of Corporations. There's other standard language here. The other thing that I want to make mention is this is all standard language within the New York State Codes. But what I want to point out is that 501c3. Just because it says it in this document, I want people to understand very clearly that FAIR Incorporated is not a 501c3 organization. A lot of people do know this who have been paying attention, but some people don't understand this. FAIR is just a state nonprofit. They are not a federally recognized nonprofit. What does that mean? It means that when FAIR operates and it buys services in New York, such as goods like paper and other things, they can get zero tax on those items. I've worked as a cashier. I've had, you know, pastors who are doing and buying a bunch of stuff in bulk on behalf of a church going in. And they use the same rules to get rid of tax. You know, churches, synagogues, and mosques, and other organizations that have state tax-exempt status, a not-for-profit is one of them, that falls under that there's a code that they give them with a letter from the state, from the Secretary of State of that state usually, from a division of corporations or otherwise, and then that is what they use to get that. They present it to someone like me as a cashier, as a vent, you know, on behalf of the vendor. And then I zero out their tax using that code. I don't know how they do it in every single state. That's just how Massachusetts operates. But that's how that works. Doesn't get rid of every tax, though. What that means is that FAIR cannot unilaterally, for a donation, send anything cannot send a letter from their corporate offices that says that your donation of 10 or $20 can be sent to the IRS so that it's a tax-deductible donation. It doesn't work like that when you're a state nonprofit. They can't do that with the IRS. The next document is just confirmation, and then it's just, you know, the, the January 15, 2021 filing. So I'm going to get off of that, and we are going to look at the Board of Directors. So as you can see, Board of Directors, we, Board of Advisors, excuse me, the Board of Advisors of FAIR. So for example, we know that Melissa's on it, but again, we don't know how this operates. We don't know why it operates. And if you look further, Barry's on it, but again, we don't know why it operates the way that it does. 
What you'll notice is at the bottom is it says that the Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism Fair is a nonpartisan organization dedicated to advancing civil rights and liberties of all Americans and promoting a common culture based on fairness, understanding, and humanity. They're honest. They're telling us that they're normally at the bottom. It will say if they have 501c3 organization for their either their mission or for their main page. They don't have that, and they've been up front that they aren't. It's just a lot of people don't know that. They don't see that. All they hear is that they're not-for-profit, a domestic not-for-profit, and they think, oh, this is just like anything else. The difference is where the tax exemptions come in. It's either at the state level or it's at the federal level. You can have both. It's not common that people have both, and usually people think that the state one is worth less than the federal one, and that can usually be true, although everything in New York is very expensive, so that move, that unilateral move to go to that made sense. This is all important because... If you look at their donations page, they their donations primarily go to an advocacy fund, which means that it's not not-for-profit status that something is being sent to. There is another organization that possibly has another board of directors that does stuff that advocates for political issues or has the power to. Not-for-profits cannot do political activities, but advocacy groups and PACs can they also can be subject to FOIA requests, which is what I may do next to understand how this advocacy fund works. But you'll notice at the bottom is it says that donations to the Fair Advocacy Fund are not tax, tax deductible. They can't be. But to make a taxable donation to Fair, click there. So you click there and you go to the tax deductible donation page. And it says here the Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism is a financially sponsored program of United Charitable, an actual registered 501 you know, 501c3 nonprofit organization. Then if you go over to United Charitable, you'll notice that right up front, you'll know who their CEO and board of directors are. You know that Julia Healy is their chief executive officer, and you know every single person on that 10-person board. There are bios. There are pictures. You know that they're voting members. It's not a surprise. Same with the one that I'm in. You can look up. You know who's on it. Do you want to know who, who isn't on here? We don't even know that Bion Barding is the CEO because it does not say that anywhere on here. There's nothing that I found. Maybe it does, but it definitely does not say who their board of directors are, and it definitely doesn't say that it's Melissa Chen and Barry. This is all extremely important because... When they put out that letter, we don't know who gets to make that decision. Could it unilaterally have been the executive staff? Could it have been the CEO with the hired staff that they have up there? Yes, that is entirely legally possible. But we don't know that. We didn't even know up until this point that Melissa Chen and Barry had any voting rights in this at all. Without having their board of directors listed and having to have somebody request it to find it out, without knowing their internal policies, without understanding what their board of directors' power, board of advisors' powers are, or even their board of directors' powers are, it makes what they did with the Merrick Garland situation and the memorandum from the Attorney General's office in response to the request, basically the request, but also the letter put out by the National School Boards Association, the NSBA, it puts everyone in a bad situation because FAIR is supposed to act basically what the ACLU is not doing right now and they aren't because what they basically said in that very as as Dr. B says at feckless letter what they've said is basically hey we're gonna come out and say you know violence should be it really needs to go without saying that people punching people is a bad thing that people throwing chairs is a bad thing, that people storming, you know, basically storming the castle is a bad thing. It really needs to start going without saying because we're becoming so politically correct. We are we are missing the for you know, we're we're missing the tree or the outcrop in the forest. We're totally missing what's actually going on out there. And Fair is totally missed the mark on that letter. It was very self-conceiting. It was very self-flattering. It was not a good document, and it's not a press release. Deb said it on our, you know, on the channel, on Dr. B's channel, when we gave that, you know, response to what Fair was doing. 
It's not. It's not a press release. It's an email sent to the Attorney General's office, and why was the board consulted on this? This is really basic stuff that, while boards are not obligated if they do things in you know private sessions to release that information, they usually do. Because it's like, oh, this is going bad. Like, we need to be transparent, and then we either need to do a public meeting where we walk it back, or a public statement where we walk back what we're doing, or we walk forward, or we walk this, or we walk that. We go left, we go right, we do what. But no, that's not what FAIR's doing. We don't even see, you know, Byron Bartning is the CEO of FAIR. He's not listed. He is not, I mean, he's mentioned in the videos, he puts out stuff, it's clear that he's the CEO, he makes it known, but he's not listed on the website. Maybe embedded in the videos, maybe I'm missing it somewhere, I pray I'm missing it somewhere, I at least would like it if the CEO was listed on the website. And again, we don't even know what the function of the board of advisors are. We don't know, do they, do they vote on who the membership is? Is it like secret vote? Do they like not know? Like, it's... It's weird. Again, I, you, when you deal with nonprofits, yes, all their internal rules are wicked different. But I listen. Doctor B has made mention that there has been some that there's people jumping ship from fair left and right, and I think that this transparency issue, even though they have total right not to tell us certain things, because they still are. A, an organization that's not governmental they still have certain privacy rights they have to they they have to recognize that this isn't going well that that operating in this particular fashion is not what people are used to when they're dealing with nonprofits but also in general it's not going to work in 2021 like this people need to be confident and know who is responsible why are they responsible who is responsible for what and that's just how things kind of go when you want people to trust you. I just... Anyway, like, share, and subscribe if you like this content. I'm doing more stuff on my Locals community at justice.locals.com. That is at justice.locals.com. Please subscribe. You can be a free member or you can be a premium member. I really don't care which if you become, you know, that kind of subscriber or not. But I would really appreciate it. Please, please, please share this video, and also the next video that I'm going to do, I'm going to be talking about the Arizona Board, you know, State Board of, not State Board of Education, St State Department of Education, the Arizona State Department of Education, to try and wrap up a bigger conversation that I wanted to have when I, you know, talked about those ARPA ESSER funds earlier. We're going to talk about the CARES Act a little bit, we're going to talk a little bit about ARPA again. We're going to talk about a few other things that I think people really need to start digging into because it's way too much information just for me to go after. I think people need to understand what they are looking for and where these bad ideas are coming from in these states and just how bad the public education system is, which I am trying to basically hammer down on this channel. I am going to do those future videos on what is critical race theory and what the white identitarians are. It's just not happening tonight. That, that's all I got. I thank you for listening whenever you're watching this. I hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much.